righty, oh righty, oh righty then. Mm. Long day today. Robert, thank you so much for tuning in back in. Um, I think somebody was trying to join this meeting. Um, and if I haven't invited you to join, please don't because it, it messes up. It messes up with my schematics here. So I only want to be, yes, I want to, I only want to be ready to invite people when I'm ready. Okay. So guys, I don't know if you can see the, the topic that I really want to discuss today, because if you were watching yesterday, um, we were talking about content and then, um, we found out um, that a lot of people don't quite know what content to actually put out there. And the more they try and put out stuff without them actually understanding who they are, that's where the big conflict starts to happen. So I really want to try and clarify that today and just really hope that the people that are watching here um, are people that... Um, you know, we've been working together and are working towards having a business that's actually prof profitable and enjoyable, okay? And if it's your first time to tune in, welcome aboard. My name is Prosper Tarovinga. Every single day at 2 uh, p.m. AEST, if there's no daylight servings, we come around here and we just chat about how to actually make your business profitable and enjoyable so that you can actually um, create and relate to the people that you're going to be demanding money off of, all right? So um, normally we are talking about a simple four-step process that I designed, which is called the Online Prosperity Blueprint, where you actually capture the people you want to talk to, send them the right kind of content, convert them into your customers, and then you connect with them. That's how winning is done on the internet. And I try and reiterate that to everybody else that's, um, you know, in my audience every single day. Now, I've got a question for you today. First of all, um, if you're watching this live, I want to know what makes you credible. Can you type in the comments there? Whatever it is that you do, I can see there's about 15 people that are watching at the moment. What makes you a credible person in your journey and what you're doing um, to your customers? Why would they trust you? I really want to know what you think makes you credible online, okay? Because people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So if you want people to do business with you, they've got to trust you at some point. I just got to know what makes you think you are credible. Nicole, can you answer the question? What makes you think you are credible online? What makes you think people believe what you say? What makes you think people understand you? What makes you, what makes you think people actually want to do business with you? All right, Simran, thank you so much for tuning in. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything has been okay. I'm asking the question today. What makes you credible? What makes you think people um, trust you online? Okay. Those that are watching right now, if you can type in that question, um, you know, depending on your own personal uh, thinking, what makes you actually think you're credible? Because we might think or what we perceive other people think of our businesses might not be what they actually think, all right? What we think of ourselves is not exactly what other people see. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I sometimes feel like I'm helping people, but some people already have their mindset and they think I'm just being annoying. Now, Scott Woodrow says consistency. Now, can you explain what you mean by consistency? Is it by showing up, um, you know, every single day or is it by the colors of your brand? Are they consistent or is it in the way you talk? Is it consistent or is it in the way that you deliver your message? Now, Nicole says being knowledgeable. Is that um, you know, what you think people think you'd be credible if you know a thing or two, because what could happen is somebody can read prior to a live like this, all right, and then they can just come up with um, information as if they already know what's going on. Now, Scott also says extensive industry experience and a track record. That's That's a really good one. If you know that people already know who you are, people already know, um, you know, your track record, people already um, have 
um, you know what, 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 you know, you also already have social proof that also makes you a little bit credible. Rachel, thank you so much for tuning in. I was watching our video earlier on. We did drop, um, you know, a, a lot of value there. Thank you so much for, um, you know, creating with me yesterday. Now, today I want to talk about something that a lot of people find as very confronting, but it's a truth that needs to be spoken about. I want to know. How well do you actually know your own business? Um, people can feel the results and they know what you're doing. They socialize in the way you do. I am slow and steady and eventually they are surprised. Cool stuff. Rachel, thank you. Right. Um, I'll tell you what has been happening in the last one week. In the last one week, I have been reaching out to a lot of people in my audience that I feel are able to give value and I've been inviting them so that we can do, um, you know, shows or we can do an interview so that they can tell us what they do, who they do it for and, um, you know, who they serve so that, um, you know, people that are in my audience can also know what's happening. But what I've figured out is a lot of people out there, especially the coaches, first of all, are not confident if they're not in their, if, if they're not in their own space. A lot of coaches are not confident in their own message. A lot of coaches are not, um, you know, confident in their own delivery. All right. Uh, you know, if you know what you do and if you know how you serve people, if somebody asks you to help another group of people, wouldn't you take that opportunity? You see, so all of that has been making me realize that there's a big void in the market in the, 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 the space of how people perceive themselves as a business person and how they actually think they know what they're talking about. All right. And Rachel says, tell them to come and see me and they will have to. <laughs> I will definitely do that, my love. You know, we have a connection now. All right. And Robert says, I have that opportunity waiting for me. All right. How well do you actually know your own business? I'm going to ask you three questions that will actually take you off base and make you start reconsidering if your message out there is actually understood by your customers or do people actually, um, you know, hear what you're saying or understand what you're all about. Now, Paul Harry says it's all about posture and believe in yourself. You mean if I stand like this, um, you will be able to believe me? Is that what you mean, Paul Harris? Or if I come in and I stand with authority or I don't know, what is it? A power pause or something like that. Is that what you mean that people would um, be, be believing in you? Um, I don't know if, if you guys have this saying um, in English. Back home, we have this statement that um, a cobbler, a cobbler's shoes. I mean, a cobbler's, a cobbler's kids may have no shoes. All right. And it's an, it's an intriguing little idiom where you actually find that people that say they are helping other people to get money are usually broke. People that say they're helping other people with social media, their social media is usually appalling. People that say they're helping people with confidence and with, um, you know, you know, finding their why they actually don't know what their confidence pause is or what their confidence, you know, stands is or what their why is. All right. We might be talking about, you know, shoemaking, um, you know, and, you know, or some kind of other business. By the way, I want you to tell me something. What makes you credible in your business? I need to know that because some people really get caught up in thinking that what they're doing is meaningful. Some people really get caught up in thinking that what they do is needed on the market. All right. Do you know what I mean? So I mentioned earlier on that usually a cobbler's children does not have shoes. Have you ever seen a lot of people that call themselves designers? They have crappy websites. Have you ever seen, you know, tech um, companies that have bad internet in their own offices? Do you know what I mean? Fitness people that, you know, usually sneak on their cheat days. All right, we are still human. You know what I mean? There's copywriters out there that has the worst about us pages or even no about us page at all. All right. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, 
was that is, is it just me that notices things like that yeah I think that you know if I really want to be um, you know credible out there I need to get my website to an acceptable state you know what I mean that is a priority to me and from day one I specifically make sure that I have the best website out there and if I don't have the best website I continuously look at it all right for some other reason, some people are not actually looking at what they are serving or what it is that they are preaching. Yes, as Luke says, practice what you preach. All right? So I'm still going to be asking. All right? Do you actually know right now who it is that you serve? Who needs your services? Can you type it down? Hmm? Why are other people going to be giving you money for your service? Who needs your service? See, if you can't speak impactfully to somebody without, you know, you, you, you can't, you know, influence somebody who doesn't respect you. You can't influence somebody who doesn't understand what it is that you're trying to tell them. So do you know in your business right now, who do you actually serve? Who needs your services? Most service based businesses, you know, there's, there's a bit of a conundrum there. What if people you're currently trying to serve aren't the ones that you actually want to work with? A lot of us are just doing it for the money. But what if the people you're trying to reach out are not exactly the kind of clientele you want to work with? Sometimes we, we, we you know, we, 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 we've never really sat down to actually define ourselves and who our ideal client is. Or if you did... You're not really reaching out to them. Your website right now, is it speaking to the exact person that you want to reach out to? Yeah? So you really have to be specific about who you are there for and why they need to pay attention to you. Because at the end of the day, don't try and serve everyone, guys. And Rachel says, coaches and business owners, that's um, you're talking about right now is who my ideal client is. Okay. At least you have, you know, some sort of, um, you know, uh, definition of who you want to serve. Because if you go out trying to serve everybody else, you will end up saving no one. All right. You want to make sure that you name and you call out your target client exactly from your homepage. And only use past examples. You know, when you're putting out testimonials right there. Don't just put testimonials of everyone. Put out testimonials from your past ideal clients so that when people are looking at your portfolio, it's crystal clear who you're talking to. Because I want to give you an example real quick. One second. I'll give you, I'll give you an example real quick. A 26-year-old female, all right, cannot be your target audience. A 26-year-old female cannot be your target audience. Because you don't know what's happening in that person's life at that particular moment. Maybe that female is a, a career woman. Maybe that female is a stay-at-home mom. Do you know what I mean? So automatically those people are already two different people. The stay-at-home mom is quite happy with making sure that both her legs are shaved at the same time. Because the little kids are always distracting her. All right. So if you your business is selling, you know, um, you know, razors or something like that, you need to make sure you catch Sally who works in a, in a corporate environment on her way to work. So that's why I'm saying a 26 year old female is not your target audience. So you have to be crystal clear who you are trying to reach out to. That's why it makes it so difficult for you to convert. A 25-year-old male can be 500 different, um, you know, variations. That 25-year-old male can be a carpenter, can be a plumber, can be a doctor, can be a lawyer. All of those people need different things from you, so you can't serve all of them. And that's the reason why it dilutes your message. So you have to be crystal clear who you're targeting and who you're reaching out for so that they can actually see the credibility of you knowing what you're talking about. 
I know it sounds like, you, you know, when you're narrowing your focus, it, it sounds scary because then you're left with nothing to hold on to. But have you ever noticed if somebody writes you an email and then it says, Dear um, sir or madam, today we want to talk to you about your bank account. And it's not really specific. How many times do you delete that email? In 2018, people want specific advertising people want specific messaging so you gotta start looking at that right now so do you specifically know the 10 people that you want to start talking to you should know who they are where they stay where they work etc etc and try and just serve those people and don't worry by doing this you actually now start attracting more of your favorite kind of clients it's going to be 2018 soon. There's no need for you to be stuck with people that you don't enjoy working with. And there's no need for you to be holding your customers hostage just because you've got a service or a product that they used to like. People have so much of a choice. How many times do you wake up in the morning and, and you reach out for your phone and then if people are talking about politics or religion or things that you don't like, you just delete them or unfollow them? Can you imagine that is exactly what is happening if you stop speaking in the same language as your customers right now by actually identifying and knowing who you actually serve, it will be a problem. You know why? Because people will start deleting you or, um, you know, ignoring your messages. All right. Robert says, this is what I've been doing. They're all my friends and I mostly enjoy their company. Yeah, exactly. And I take pride in what you're doing. I'm studying you, Robert. You know why? Because you take time with the people you want to be working with in the future. And that in of itself is a big investment because now you no longer have to spray and pray with your marketing. And for that, kudos to you, sir. All right. So don't be afraid of narrowing your focus. And, 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 and being afraid of really, really honing down, even if it's particularly five people that you really want to work about. Scott says, my posts are about being reliable. My customers have said our clothing is reliable and I trust the people like me. Exactly. That's exactly what it is that you want. Do you know what I mean? So don't worry about working with a few, um, um, you know, group of people. By doing this, you actually start attracting the right kind of people and the right kind of people with the right kind of pain that you can fix. And there, my friend, it's easier for you to be credible. You don't have to try. You know why? Because these people already know you. They already trust you and they can work with you easily. All right. And then that's where loyalty is brought about. You are not trying too hard and it's not too much of an effort and you're no longer, you know, hustling so that you can reach out to all those people. Then you have full freedom to actually choose who you want to work with. All right. And once you know how you can serve those people, once you know exactly what it is that, you, that, that they want, it's easy for you to go out and create for them and they can actually understand what it is that they will be getting from you. All right. So at the end of the day, now that you know who you want to serve, you want to figure out how you serve them. Because in and of itself, knowing how other people want to be approached is the biggest tool that you need to be using online these days. Some people are readers. Some people are, are visual learners. Some people are, are listeners, all right? And some people like, um, yes, reading stuff. And some people like being immersed in, um, you know, uh, real life um, events. So once you know what those people are, you will automatically know how best you can serve them. Because going back to the example we talked about a little bit earlier on. Hey, Alex Tripod, how's it going? I can't wait for our chat a bit later on. Once you know how to serve those people, you would know that Sally is on her way to work. So if I put a three sentence status update, they can read it on their lunch break. And then that you would have passed on a message to them. Because if you're going to be sitting there with a 20 foot long, um, you know, uh, 20 foot long status update and Sally only has 15 minutes on her lunch break, how is she going to, you know, consume all that content? 
So once you know who those people are, what they're doing at particular times of the day, it's easy for you to know how to serve them. It's easy for you to know what to actually offer your clients. These days when you go to a restaurant, the waiter asks you, is there anyone who's gluten-free, anyone who's uh, vegetarian, or anyone who is, um, or, you know, or, or all those other allergies, you know? Because people now have preferences and people have a choice. So if you don't know who you're serving, how are you going to know if, you, if what you're giving them is, is, is conducive for them? Do you know what I mean? You might be, um, you know, tempted to list out all your services and how great and how important, um, you know, the stuff that you do. But if you're not serving anyone and if no one is paying particular attention to what you're saying or how you do it, how is that going to help you or the people that you're bombarding with, with information with for? Yeah. So you need to specifically define who you serve and how you serve them. It makes your life a whole lot easier, stress-free. You know why? Because you're just serving people that are already ready and are receptive to your message. You know? So you need to create all those foundations in your business so that you are clear on your message so that you don't keep tripping on yourself. As you know, my message is to actually help small businesses like yourself to actually brand, market, and so you can, um, you know, scale, all right? And in the process, you're having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Every single day, that's why we sit down here and we talk about strategies that you can use in your business so that you can earn more money with less struggle. Once you're clear on what you're doing, it becomes very easy for you to, you know, establish w the people that you're going to be connecting with. You need to explain what is it, what are the benefits that your clients are going to be getting from working with you? You know, what is the impact that your work has on their business and on their life? Are you just selling a product that nobody wants? You know, so as a, as a maybe you're a designer or maybe you, you do copywriting, you know, you might offer beautiful websites. But what if that client clientele is just on social media and it doesn't actually benefit them to have a website? You know, so you really need to find where that point of connection is with 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 those people you're going to be serving and make sure that you're actually delivering what people want. First of all, it doesn't frustrate you. And second of all, it won't frustrate those that are on the receiving end. You know, maybe you're a nutritionist or you work in the health um, you know, sector. You might be offering them a downloadable uh, meal plan. But if you don't know if these people are vegetarian or not, how are you going to know what sort of meals are good for them? So right these days, you really have to be specific because detail is important. You know, so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. It's no longer a one size fits all type marketing right now. You really need to know who you are personally and who you want to serve and how you can serve them. In that way, you're not tripping on yourself. Do you know what I mean? You really just keep continuously focus on your benefits. Do you know what I mean? And thank you so much, Nicole. All right? So you want to constantly be providing your best version out there. There's 2.5 active social media people. Don't hang on or hold people hostage that don't want to be in your email lists. Don't hold people hostage in, in your, on your pages that don't want to be there anymore. You know the reason why I'm saying this? I've got a two-year-old daughter. Two years ago, all right, two years ago, she would fit in here and I was walking around, you know, making phone calls, et cetera, et cetera. But now I can't even lift her up because she's now this big girl. What happened in the two years? She grew, her, her interest changed. You know what I mean? Her interest changed. Um, her perception of life changed. What she wants changed. How she dresses changed. That is also happening to you. That is also happening to your customers as we speak. People are growing 
It's faster and noticeable in kids, but in also adults, people are also growing, um, you know, as they're, as they're getting along. So what does that mean? People's tastes, people's needs, they're constantly changing. You also have to be revamping your message and actually making sure, are you still relevant? Are you still credible to the people that you think you're being credible to? You get the idea? In the process, you don't lose yourself. Do you know how many coaches, um, you know, retire early because they, they go way ahead of themselves only to realize that the world still hasn't caught up with, you know, their hoo-hoo stuff. And then now they feel like they're mental and they just want to disconnect from everybody. You know? So when you figure out who you are, you just want to make sure you are perambulating at close proximity. Oh, that was, that was, that was some big words right there. Prosper, where did that come from? <laughs> you know, you know, birds of a feather perambulate at close proximity, right? And you, you know, birds of a feather fly together, all right? So you want to find out, are you still aligned with the people that you're hanging around with? Because you might be going on and people just look at you like Jim Carrey. And they don't understand what it is that you're talking about. All right? Lori, thank you so much for tuning in. And Carlos, thank you so much for joining in. So you need to figure out who are you? Because this is the piece of the puzzle that brings it all together. All right? Anyone can do what you can do. But not anyone can be you. No one has your voice. No one has your mannerisms. No one has your unique personality. So you need to embrace that. But guess what? Every 365 days, that you, that you know, also changes. So you need to keep abreast with that true player in there and figure out, are you guys still operating on the same wavelength? And once you're clear and you're really star clear on who you are, what you stand for, you become a powerful differentiator. People would be sharing your stuff. Everybody will be talking about you. You know why? Because it's easier to build trust with somebody who's not a copycat. You become personal. You the people feel like they already know you just by hanging around your stuff, your content, etc., etc. It becomes personal. And guess what? That's how transactions happen. Especially this day and age. All right? So now when we're talking about who you are, we actually want you to ask yourself a few specific questions. What actually makes you unique and qualified to offer what you're offering the people and uh, you, that you, you're offering right now? What makes you unique? Can Sally down the road not do the same thing? Can John, who's got the same website template that you have, not do the same thing? All right. How do you then differentiate yourself? Your values, your mannerisms, your, 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 you know, your energy, how you deliver, what experiences are you giving people? My experience so far is, you know, taking people through a journey um, with their business every single day for 30 minutes. That's my thing, unless somebody is copying it or is also trying to do it somewhere else. But I don't think they would do it with the same energy, with the same consistency and with the same tenacity. That's my thing. I can't write. So figure out what you're good at and then just go out there as if your life depends on it. Because it does. 2018 is upon us, guys. One other thing that you really, really need to figure out is why do you actually do what you do? And Robert says, I really care about the person that I'm helping. I put so much energy um, as I can. It doesn't feel like work. It is empowering. Exactly. Like what we do here, guys, every single day. I've met a tremendous amount of people and people are sharing my content the world over only because I'm showing up. Janice, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in, my love. And John, thank you so much. All right. So you really need to figure out what makes you uniquely qualified to offer what you're offering to people who you're going to be offering it for. All right. How are they going to reciprocate? How are they going to differentiate? How are they going to talk about you at a barbecue to say, oh, Janice does this. Sally does this. Nicole does this. You need to feed them that information. All right. So there it is now. It's very, very it's actually a very important part, you know, not to only just look at selling your services, 
but also to remember you are working with people's hopes, people's dreams, people's feelings. That you are actually qualified and you're going to be there for them. Because when imposter syndrome starts knocking in, that's why a lot of us are not going to be seen in 2018. Because you're not aligned with who you say you are and exactly the, 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 the amount of attention that needs you to be where you say you are and who you serve. All right? You want to make sure that your values are aligned to what you do and you are congruent 24-7 because people are watching. People are listening. All right? You can only fake people for a certain amount of time, but it will catch up with you. All right? So if you really, really want to figure out how you can put it all in together, you really want to know your business, answer these questions that I just gave. All right. The better way, the, the more you do this, you now understand the foundations of how your business actually operates. All right. And the better you present yourself at any given time to your potential clients, that's how loyalty is brought up and you stay true to what you're really about. And that's how credibility is brought up. It's not something you buy off of a shelf. It's not something that you buy in a course. It's up in here. I really want you to win. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I really want you to make a lot of money with less trouble. Let me know how I can be of help. And I really hope this video was useful to those that were listening today. Figure out what it is that you are actually doing. All right, who you do it for and how you can actually be credible. And like what Scott says, this world is in, in a world of fake news. Be an original. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much for tuning in.